Right, these are the principles we use building a block paved driveway. The existing driveway is excavated with a one and a half ton mini digger and breaker. All the concrete is kept separately from the soil so the grab lorry can load it first and later crush it into hardcore. Cement has an enormous carbon footprint from the carbon dioxide it releases so it's really good practice to keep it clean once redundant so the grab company can do their job of recycling it. Once the first layer is gone the utilities are located. Utilities are hazardous so working with rams is necessary. The risk assessment and method statement in basic terms means all hazards on the job have been itemised and a plan of action drawn up in case anything was to go wrong. This includes the emergency phone numbers of the local utility service providers which could be affected by the work being commenced. Everyone on site then reads and signs a document to show they understand the risks and what methods will be used in the event of an emergency. This is good practice as all groundworks should be a calculated risk. A cat or cable avoidance tool is used to locate the power running into the building. Here it was found entering where the garage meets the house. The gas pipe can be located in front of the gas meter and a test hole can be carefully dug to check its depth in the ground. The water pipe runs in under the stopcock and this can be lifted to reveal its depth. Once the first layer is gone, a string line is set up to mark the levels of the new driveway. A flat grading bucket is used with no teeth as it's less likely to damage the cables. It also leaves a smoother finished surface. As the driveway is to have compound jointed blocks, the spec being dug out to is 300mm. This is to allow for a 60mm block, 25mm of sand and a minimum of 215mm of compact MOT Type 1 which in places will be deeper. At this stage, drainage is installed. On the right hand side of the screen is a foul drain inspection chamber taking waste from the house to the main sewer. The water running off the new driveway cannot be connected to this drain nor can it flow onto public paths or roads without prior planning consent. To comply with SUDS, or Sustainable Urban Drainage Systems, the water runoff from the non-permeable driveway has to drain into the ground on site. This can be in the form of a flower bed known as a rain garden a separate surface water system, or a soakaway. This particular job has an existing surface water system connecting the three houses on this side of the street and running into a soakaway network, which has been tested and works efficiently. If the property didn't have the luxury of an existing drainage system and there isn't enough room for a rain garden, a new soakaway needs to be installed as demonstrated on this other project. To calculate the size, for every 50 square metres of driveway, one cubic metre of soakaway is required to drain sufficiently and that's vital if the ground flows back towards the house. In this example, crates are used which lock together. The hole must be dug over five metres from the property and two metres away from the boundary. It's lined with gravel and the crate is wrapped in a non-woven geotextile membrane known as a terram. It's then positioned in the hole with the top finishing below the level of the MOT subbase. It's then surrounded with more gravel. The 110mm inlet pipe is then trenched into the ground and inserted through the entrance hole in the crate. The pipe is installed with a sufficient fall towards the soakaway to direct the flow of water. If the crate is under the driveway itself, it's good practice to install a lid with reinforced concrete. Crates have a 60 tonne weight load to support traffic from above, but as this ground will be continuously saturated with rainwater, a lid will help stabilise the whole area. Here a simple method using gravel boards laid flat on top of the crate. These contain rebar and are bedded on the mortar where they oversail the sides, stabilising the soakaway. SUDS was introduced to protect the environment by reducing the migration of rainwater across newly paved areas. It's simple, effective and inexpensive and should always be researched and included in every project. Once drainage is organised, the ground can be tracked over to firm up the subsoil ready for the new driveway. A non-woven geotextile terram stabilisation membrane is spread over the ground before the MOT is brought in. After ground is paved over, the soil underneath is prone to dehydration. This can cause shrinkage and if cracks were to open up, MOT can travel down into these voids. Without a membrane for support, it can compromise the subbase affecting the new driveway. The first layer of MOT is grabbed in. Once a thin layer is spread over the membrane, the machine can be tracked over to spread the rest. The first layer is evened out and then compact with the whacker plate. 
Different size machines have different weights of PSI ratings and as the first two layers are around 100mm when compact, a heavy duty wacker plate is used. The MOT is whacked in a crosshatch pattern until compact. The second 100mm layer of MOT is grabbed in. It's spread evenly and then whacked repeatedly in a crosshatch pattern. These depths are for compound jointed blocks. Other blocks and joint types may have different specs. The area is then soaked through with water before the final whack. Water is very important to increase the compaction and stability of the finished subbase. When the subbase is completely flat with no more indentation from the wacker plate, it's ready for the next phase which is installing the front wall. Remember, always follow the product's most recent installation guidelines and not videos on YouTube. If unsure or need advice, contact the manufacturer's technical support team. They're there to help and a correct installation will ensure you maintain the product's warranty. Good luck.